Hey guys, what's going on? This is Alex and today I'm going to bring you guys the Fujifilm S4250 camera review. This camera takes some aging pictures for its price of $200. For $200, you get a resolution of 14 megapixels, an optical zoom of 24 times, and your optical sensor type is a 1 slash 2.3 inch sensor, and you get an image stabilizer which is a CCD. This camera also features a very cool pop-up flash which is most seen in now bridge cameras. To activate the pop-up flash, all you do is either activate into full auto mode or just press the button on this side and the flash springs up like a frog off a leaf. This actually is a very good flash, but it's not that bright. However, it does not make the picture look very good when the flash is on. On this side of the camera, you get the on-off switch, and on the front shutter button, you get your zoom and go back zoom, basically. These zoom features are very good. You also get a face recognition button and a continuous shooting button, which is how you activate the continuous shooting. You also have an on-off switch or slider that you would slide to go to on or off depending if you're going to use the camera or you're not. So if you take a close look to the camera once the camera is on, I'm just going to show you guys under. Now this is a really bad problem. When you have the tripod mount, you're going to realize you can't use it because you have to take out the batteries. And yes, I said batteries. This does use double A batteries. You can either use the met nickel metal hydride or lithium ion, which are very expensive. I just use these end loop rechargeable ones. They do serve me very well when using this camera. However, you do want to pay attention you put them in the right order. This also does use an SDHC card slot. This was not, does not have two, it only has one. As I mentioned, the tripod mount is possibly in its worst position out there. Alright, so if we take a closer look on the camera, we're going to realize we have our 3 inch LCD CCD screen, which is not very good to start with. It features terrible quality and it's not very good to preview your images. That's why it's better off to move them onto the computer. Moving on to the side, if we take a close looker here, we have our exposure button, menu OK, we have our switch button, we also have our macro button to the left, uh, to the right we have our flash button, and to the bottom we have our timer button. We also have two buttons on the bottom, one display and the back button, and the play button to preview our images once we're done capturing them. This camera also features 720p HD video with not a very good sounding mic. However, most cameras these days have terrible mics. That's why it's better to do a voiceover just like I'm doing now. So if we take a closer look into the camera itself, we're going to realize that I am starting in manual mode. This does have a manual switch dial which you can program up to 7 modes. If you take a close look here, we have manual mode. You, all you do is you have to press the button down once to focus and to shoot the picture again. This does not have a very good focus. However, when it does focus, you will hear a beep and the screen will display a very clear shuttle green and yellow button. If you're not in focus, then, you're good, then your screen will display a red button, meaning that you're going to want to take the picture very carefully or the picture will not come out at all. We have custom mode, which allows you to display all that custom stuff. In the movie sound, we have movie recording with sound, which again does feature 720p HD video. It's not that very good video, but I have shot videos in my YouTube channel, so go check those out with this camera, since I now upgraded to a Canon T5i. If we take a closer look here, we have panorama mode, which is not that very common in cameras anymore, because this camera does feature a very cool image stabilization, dual image stabilization, as well as panorama mode. Just I can never have gotten panorama mode to work very perfectly, so all the camera, all the images always come out terribly crappy. As I mentioned before, the images are terrible. So just to show you guys that image was terrible. We also have our SP mode, which is a smile and shoot, which is what gives away this camera for $200. This camera, when someone smiles, it automatically takes the picture. That way, making it get the perfect picture every time, or known as selfie. If we take a closer look, we have SR Auto, which allows you to select the optimum camera settings for your personality and user. So if we take a look, we have full auto. Basically, if you're in a low light situation or if you're switching times, or zones every time to use this mode. And then we have full auto, which is the orange camera. We have program AE, and then that allows you to automatic mode. We have shutter priority, which allows you to change your shutter speed using the exposure button. So you click on this, you go up or down to change the shutter speed. This is not like Canon or Nikon has it. It's a little different on a Canon and a Nikon. 
And if we take a closer look, we also have aperture priority, which allows you to change the aperture, thus resulting in a blurry background or shallow depth of field. So if we take a closer look here, we are allowed to change our exposure, our shutter speed automatically changes for us, and this only allows us to change our aperture. If we take a close on manual mode, you have full manual controls on your camera. However, this mode is for more professional photographers. However, I'm giving you this tip. If you're planning to become a professional photographer, it is a good camera to start with. However, you want to be careful because sometimes it will not work if you want to. Taking a closer look at the lens, it is Super EBC Fujinon lens, featuring 24 times zoom and an f-stop of 3.1 and 5.9. Thus, it can result in a blurry background if you're using it right. May not. For me, it never did. Now, taking a look, closer look at the zoom, since I mentioned this is a 24 times zoom, it is pretty large for this size camera. This lens does come out quite a bit, featuring and giving you a very cool shallow depth of field and long zoom. This also has an astonishing 1 times 15, 115 times zoom, op, digital zoom. Then optical zoom is 24 times. So taking a closer look now when we zoom in here. And we're going to realize that this camera will zoom in quite a bit for us. All you do is swipe the sensor, you're at 28 times zoom. If we go back a little, all the way back, it's going to give us to a standard position right there. And once you do that, all you do is just zoom in. It's going to stop at 24, you have to let go, and then you have to zoom in again for it to get the digital zoom. However, to activate the digital zoom, you must have digital zoom activated in the menu settings. So again, it's a 160 times digital zoom, which can be very blurry. I recommend not to use this because your images just won't turn out right. Taking another close look at the zoom, the zoom lens does feature numbers on top of the camera, which does give us very accurate results. As you see, it listed in millimeters and also in point millimeters. So we have 80 millimeters is 4. 14.3 millimeters focal length. This is equivalent of 135 millimeters on a standard lens. Um, a week again is a three inch display. It's only to adequate your images will mostly look better in its displays. However, this lens will take very good pictures at any zoom height depending on what kind of situation you are in. So I definitely recommend this camera for those beginner photographers. On the side we have our HDMI out and we also have our um, USB and AV cable out in. Uh, basically, this is how you transfer images without having to take out the SD card, so that it is not a bad place if you're using a tripod mount. This camera it has a big con, and that it would not work with Max. In order to Im transfer images off to Max, you would have to actually either take out the SD card or use image capture to transfer them over. Now, I'm going to show you guys at the end of the video some sample images of this camera and its 14 megapixel CMOS sensor. It does take okay pictures, and I do really recommend this camera for those who want to begin their photography lessons and all of that stuff. However, if you want more than a pocket camera can do, and in many cases for less money, this is the camera for you to buy. So let's go ahead and take a look at our sample images. This image was shot this morning in my backyard with using the manual mode on ISO 800. The, uh, for some of me, the auto mode would not focus this picture in length. This is also using macro. Over here is some private airport near my house. On location is unknown. Well, uh, I won't tell you my location, but still, it's some private airport. Now, this is my house shot at 9 o'clock in the morning uh, with on using the full auto mode. If you notice, I really like this uh, house because it has the amber trees behind it and it really like, lights it up. This was shot in Europe in my vacation when I took last summer. I went to Europe and I used this camera because at that time I also had my Canon with me, but I didn't want to use this review. And we have a random goose, which is uh, a shot of full-on zoom across the lake using this camera. Bye, guys. See you in my next one. Peace.